raining on our parade. I know. <laughs> someone, someone had to do it. You're someone right. had to say it. I mean, uh, there were a lot of skeptics to this rally. We're now near four-year highs. But I just felt like it was worth pointing out that earnings, which have been the real fuel for us for the last couple of years here, are starting to look like they may be flagging a little bit, yeah. which isn't... You know, unexpected. It's, it's right. just part of the business cycle. But what it means is but that... What, what does this tell us about where we are in the business cycle? Yeah, well, what it says is that things uh, were coming off a really low base. Uh, if you are a CEO, if you are uh, looking to squeeze uh, the same level of profits out of less revenue, what you had to do was you had to fire workers, you had to close factories. Right. All of that's been done now. And for the first time, we're really starting to see margins come down a lot. Profit margins are coming down. And again, that's a natural part of the cycle. Well, yeah. and let, if let this is say, happening sorry, for encouraging, so there's two, right. there's a couple of things going right, on here. Exactly. I mean, the one is that you get into a situation where companies were expecting a certain level of demand that didn't materialize. That's right. Big problem. The other, on the other hand, you have a situation where companies suddenly have to pay more for workers, and right. Right. that's not so much a problem from like a broader econ point of view. That's right. Neil, I, I was just going to say, and you know, we want to hear your response, but just to make the point a slightly different way, couldn't it be that we're just in an interregnum period where Corporate surprised on the upside for many quarters. People kept saying, "How are they doing this? How are the profits mm -hmm. going up when their revenue number isn't going up?" Now all of a sudden, we're maybe in an interregnum period, and then hopefully, you know, from the corporate point of view, their profits will grow again right. in a more traditional way because there'll be more people employed and more more right. spending. Of course, that's that, that's what the bulls are hoping for. Right. But what that is contingent on is on the economy, not just here in the U.S., but of course in China and in Europe as well, right. uh, continuing to gain a little bit of steam, whatever steam it can get, to keep that top line growing. Because margins right now, it looks like, like first of all, we're at historic levels here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's going to be difficult no matter what to push it higher, which means that if you're going to get bottom line growth, you need top line growth. But mm -hmm. P.E. levels are not completely out of whack That's historically, right. are they? No, no, not at all. In fact, they're quite cheap. And what that means is that even if earnings do come down a little bit, it could be that investors have expected it enough or priced it in priced enough it in. that if we avoid a collapse in Europe and if China avoids a hard landing and all of those right. asterisk caviars, then perhaps we can see the multiple go up. And tell us a little bit about what's happening with corporate profits. So is it is it that there's something unexpected? Is it that there are certain industries where there's more pressure uh, than others? And you know how might that help us think about whether right. this is a good sign or not? Well, we, we highlight in the story Procter & Gamble, which of course is a, a massive company and, and they do rely not just on the U.S., of course, but a real global consumer. Uh, they've been hit by commodity prices, which haven't been too, uh, you know, frothy of late, but mm -hmm. it's still difficult when you're, uh, you know, such a huge uh, maker of, of so many different things. Uh, just to hedge that, and, and they've really well, and been hurt. Well, oil is still expensive, so anyone who's a big user right. of plastics right. and chemicals and right. that kind of thing. So they've been hurt by it. commodity prices, and uh, and what that means is that their margins are coming down. Uh, they're also spending a lot on advertising, although they're trying to bring that down a little bit but as well. But what's important here, too, is not just the companies have had to pay these higher costs. They're having a really hard time passing along higher prices to customers. Now, that does tell us something about potential weakness in consumer demand. What you'd right. like to see, if they have to pay more for workers or whatnot, is that they're able to raise prices right. a little bit because people can afford that, but we're getting resistance. We're not necessarily seeing them able right. to do that, and that is a bit of a warning. And sign. is there a possibility, though, that three months from now, four months from now, in a, in a very gradual way, not in a in a huge way, that you know, as the employment rate presumably ticks down a little bit, mm -hmm. then you know they'll have a little more pricing. Uh, they'll have a little more pricing freedom. Yeah. Right, but that's the catch twenty two. Of course, is that part of the reason why margins have been able to to to, to be so high is because they haven't had to hire that many people. So, you, so right. you save costs that way, but what it means, of course, is that for the broader economy, you have a higher unemployment rate, which means you have people a little more reluctant to spend, although mm. right. in the U.S. sometimes it can surprise us. <laughs> yeah, never <laughs> underestimate the power of the right. U.S. consumer right. to spend. Last word, what do people think is going to happen going forward for the year? What's the expectation currently for profits? Well, I mean, generally, with, when you listen to CEOs uh, doing their, their calls, they're all very cautious, and, and that's as they should be because we don't really know right. what's going to happen six months down the road. I think a lot of people are saying that we could see a little bit of weak, of weak patch here, but it's possible, as Neil says, in the second half of the year that we start to see 
a second leg up once investors and, and, and CFOs and CEOs digest this environment. The second here, half rebound. Break. And they have all that, those investment dollars that at least you know can fuel the macro economy, if not specifically get right, right to the bottom line right, right away. So Corporate balance sheets, of course. Yes. They have plenty of cash to yes. use. Jonathan Chang, again, a good point to make even as we watch uh, stock market climbing to multi-year highs. Keep I don't an want eye to see him as, as, as a skeptic or a doubter. No, 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 You're not a believer. But, you know, it's gotta... out there. We're sorry. <laughs> Mask is off. John Chang. Uh, Thanks very much.